Okay, well, I will make the assumption as it's five o'clock that we are now live. Um, good evening, everybody. Welcome to the um, virtual meeting of the Cabinet on Thursday, the 11th of June, uh, starting at 5 p.m. Um, we can be reached online um, and I think people will be able to follow it if they look at our website. First item on the agenda is to confirm as a true record the minutes of the meeting, which was held on the 12th of March. Um, this is paper A. Um, I'll just please give an indicate uh, from the cabinet members uh, that you're happy that they're to an accurate record. Councillor Mosdall, Councillor Whittle, Councillor Brading, Councillor Hutchinson, Councillor Ward, Councillor Peace, Councillor Hastings. I can't see Councillor John Hobart. You can just say agreed if you're there. You have to unmute John just to. Uh... I'm here, dog barking. Yes, yeah. yeah, sorry, I switched yeah. off because the dog's here. <laughs> yep, that's okay. I'm... So that's agreed. Yep. Yeah, that's good. Thank you very much. Moving on then to the declaration of interests. Um, do any members have an interest that they need to disclose over and above their normal interests relating to matters on the agenda? Um, okay, uh, none disclosed. Thank you, everybody. Moving on to public questions. Due to the rather unique circumstances in which this meeting is being held, we're not able to take live public questions and I've not been notified of any questions prior to today. So we can move through straight on to item four. Item four relates to the public health strategy. Again, for the benefit of members of the public who may be watching and listening, we are uh, fortunate to have with us this evening our Director of Public Health, uh, Simon Bryant, and I will ask uh, Cabinet Member Claire Mulstor, she will just introduce him, and then he will introduce the paper. Good evening. It feels appropriate to now present the public health strategy for the council at a time when we are in the middle of a public health emergency. The pandemic reminds us that good public health is essential for a prosperous and healthy island. And this strategy being presented to cabinet now has been in development for nearly a year and was delayed by COVID rather than developed due to COVID. It is also worth noting that the public health team is well used to dealing with outbreaks as part of their core cool business as set out in protecting the health of the population chapter within the strategy. COVID has meant the team is scaling up the outbreak work at considerable scale, not just not seen here before on the Isle of Wight and certainly not seen in the country either. Tackling issues like dementia requires action across the whole life course. And we know that it's important to take action at all stages of life. The start of life is key for someone's health throughout their life course. Improving health of a child will support good health at all ages. We know that for a health, healthy ageing population, we need to support the working age to prepare for the later stages in life. Mental health and physical health are of equal importance and connected and we know positive lifestyles can positively impact on both aspects of health. Finally, healthy communities and settings are key to ensuring people are able to be healthy. And I'm happy to hand over to our Director of Public Health, Simon Bryant, to explain further about this strategy. Mr Bryant. Many, many thanks, uh, Councillor Mostel. It is a great uh, pleasure to support uh, Council Mostel in presenting the uh, Isle of Wight Council Public Health Strategy for 2020 to 2025. Uh, the, the, it's worth noting the current health and care systems do focus on treating illness rather than keeping people healthy and we know people want to be healthy and having a good quality life and being in control of their health is very important. So this strategy really sets out um, some really key issues for us. Uh, to improve the health of the island population, thinking about how we manage demand for services and how we know that we need to move to a wellness model, shifting to that preventative and early intervention model. As Councillor Morsell said, this does come at a time of a public health emergency and really means that we do need to focus on protecting and promoting the health of the population. And it's a great pleasure as the Director of Public Health to present uh, this strategy. There are five sections to the strategy. Uh, first is a good start in life, focusing on children and young people, thinking about from kind of pre-birth right up to uh, adulthood. Uh, the second section is really improving physical well-being. 
And I've carefully worded that. It's not about improving lifestyles because we know that actually positive life goals can improve both physical and mental well-being, which is the third section. And in the third section, we're also focusing on suicide prevention, which is a key issue that we want to tackle. And there'll be a number of strategies like suicide prevention underpinning this uh, overarching strategy. The fourth one is about healthy places. We know healthy places can improve the health of the population and those people who live in it. And that's about community cohesion. That's about things like how we encourage active transport and think about community safety. All those aspects are really key to healthy places. And finally, the final section is about prote protecting from harm. As we have seen most dramatically recently with the uh, COVID pandemic, we need to ensure we have good systems in place, and we do, to protect people from harm in thinking about immunisations and screening programmes, but also how we respond to outbreaks. This strategy is underpinned thinking about inequalities throughout the chat, throughout the strategy. We know that some people don't experience good health in the same uh, way that others do. So we will think about that and make sure that those issues are tackled throughout for every single area uh, of the strategy. The measures are really key. So in each chapter, we set out what we want to do, what the measures are and how we want to take those forward. Uh, we'll be monitoring that progress throughout the uh, course of the strategy and giving regular updates to uh, Cabinet and colleagues uh, as appropriate. Many thanks for your time this evening. Thank you, uh, Simon. Uh, very comprehensive. Um, I note in the strategy that uh, was put in comprehensive uh, nature by yourself and others before the scrutiny committee that they also noted and supported it. Um, I notice your recommendation is for approval of the strategy as an appendix one. Um, and do we have a person who proposes that we accept that recommendation? Uh, I'm prepared to uh, uh, propose we accept that recommendation. Leader. Thank you. Seconder. I was meant to propose. OK, <laughs> you, you've proposed now. Um, thank you, members. I'll just go around the cabinet and uh, just seek your uh, your ag agreed or disagreed. Um, Councillor Mosdor, agree? Yeah, agreed. Councillor Hutchinson? Agree. Councillor Ward? Agree. Councillor Hastings? Agreed. Councillor Brading? Agreed. Councillor Hobart? Agree. Councillor Peace? Agreed. Councillor Whittle? Agreed. Councillor Abrahams? Agreed. Abraham Agreed. and myself agree. So that's a unanimous. Thank you very much. Thank you, Simon, for what has been a lot of work started well before COVID-19, but tested and shown to be a very good strategy. Thank you very much. I'll move on now to uh, item five, which is the COVID response and recovery. Um, I'll deal with the recommendations from scrutiny at the end of our discussions on this. I'm going to ask Councillor Mosdell if she would introduce um, the paper with an opening statement, which I'm sure both the members and the public will find interesting. Councillor Mosdell. Thank you, Leader. I wish to draw attention to the work of adult social care and housing needs in successfully supporting some of our most vulnerable citizens throughout this terrifying pandemic. The response of both services has been nothing short of magnificent, and I will continue to ensure that this council has placed the needs and interest of people with care, housing and support at the heart of all of our thinking, plans and initiatives. I especially wish to commend the work of the housing needs team who have been faced with a massive task in finding emergency accommodation for so many people presenting as homeless and be assured this pandemic has demanded that we respond to the needs of the previously hidden homeless. These staff have willingly given up their own evenings and weekends in order to provide the support that some of these people have required. I also wish to commend the island's care providers and the carers who work for them in individual services, be that care homes, domiciliary care agencies or as personal assistants. We are all aware that the care homes are the primary site of the current major battle against COVID-19 and care providers in the most challenging of circumstances have successfully, skillfully and tirelessly cared for and cherished residents. In particular, carers have had to step in and sub substitute for family members at some of the most important of a life events. So I want to read out from an email that the Director of Adult Social Care received last week about two carers 
who work in one of the care homes run by the council. It was sent by a community nurse and it speaks of the care they gave to someone during their dying moments. It is an emotional email, but it gives you a glimpse of the importance of the work that has and is being done across all care settings. The email is as follows. I visited yesterday to a gentleman in your care. He was dying and required me to give medicine for symptom control. I wanted to let you know that in my 15 years as a registered nurse, I have never seen such wonderful care as that which your team gave to the gentleman yesterday. When he was distressed, the two carers present sat on the bed. He fell back and they sat cuddling and reassuring him and slowly he calmed down. To me, this defines our profession at the highest level and I'm truly honoured to have been witness to this. The man died peacefully and this is no doubt due to your hard work and commitment. From me personally, I don't know how many cabinet members have actually been with someone at the point of their death. Those of you who have will know that the power of human touch and the power of the human voice is overwhelming and such a comfort to the dying person. And those of you who have been with someone at the point of their death will also know that at that point at which the person dies, it is a moment you never ever forget. It is profound. You will forever be touched and left with an ever enduring mem memory of that moment. This is what carers have been doing throughout this pandemic. When families cannot be with their loved one at that point of their death. This pandemic has demanded so much of our carers and I for one am not sure how society can ever repay our debt to them. Thank you and I now hand you over to John Metcalf, our chief executive to discuss the paper. Thank you, Claire, um, and I think that really resonates with the feeling of the cabinet and indeed the community um, who um, see all this good work going on. So I really appreciate that. Um, John, is there anything you want to add to this? I'll just preface that by saying that this paper has been through scrutiny in some depth, is in two parts. Um, and although we're going to um, read the recommendations at the end, I just want to make sure you feel that the cabinet have had sufficient brief from yourself because we will want to make a, a decision on acceptance or otherwise. Um, thank you, Chairman. Um, I think there's not an awful lot I need to add to what is set out in the paper. Um, I think the only thing uh, to point out, as I pointed out to scrutiny the other evening, um, is the fact that whilst we're talking about recovery in this paper, we're still very much in a response phase as well. And as Councillor Mosdell has, has just so eloquently set out, we still have a huge amount of things that we need to do in terms of response. And that response uh, may need to be turned up at any time uh, for if we get uh, further outbreaks of the virus across the island. So uh, not an awful lot to add, Chair. I think uh, we're very early stages of recovery. This sets out a good direction for the recovery that we need to take. But as I said on Tuesday evening, at any time, uh, we are currently trying to balance the difference between recovery and response and at any time we may need to spend more time on response and recovery and more time on recovery and response depending upon circumstance so the plan is written in a flexible way to help us to do that thank you chair thank you thank you uh, now before i deal with the recommendations and the scrutiny response um i would like it recorded that i want to extend my thanks to the cabinet members led by councillor stuart hutchinson and the officers led by both the chief executive and our director Chris Ashman for their professional work in this paper. Um, and for me, what they are doing is keeping our island safe and they are helping our island to, uh, to recover from what has been uh, a devastating virus. So that thanks is recorded. Um, the recommendations that were being asked to consider cabinet are found at items 38 to 41. The first one being at 38 that the cabinet notes and endorses the key activities undertaken by the council in response to the coronavirus pandemic since the 16th of March. Uh, I'm not asking you to vote on that at the moment, just highlighting them out. Secondly, that the cabinet agrees the proposed policy, budgetary and organisational approach needed to manage the continued, so continuing island response to the COVID-19 emergency as set out in this paper. Uh, at 40, the Cabinet agrees that the Council's approach to planning for recovery from the impact of the pandemic in conjunction with other partners 
and the establishment of an island recovery task force to oversee the ongoing development and implementation of the COVID-19 island recovery plan. And then that the cabinet agrees the aim and objectives of recovery and the draft action plan as at appendix one, noting that it will be revisited and updated as the work progresses. Um, just before I ask you to um, vote on this, I'll draw to your attention uh, the comments from scrutiny committee. I will take these individually, uh, make a recommendation to you, and then it's a matter for you to accept or otherwise. The first recommendation to the cabinet is that the health and well-being of the island residents has to be the council's priority and residents are actively engaged in the development of the recovery of the island uh, through the way they used to see their future and that we would honour the com community spirit that has been exceptional on the island and maintain it. Uh, I would recommend you accept that. Can I please ask if you do? Councillor Mosdor? Not speaking. You need to just unmute. I'm, I'm unmuted. Um, Thank you. Yes, accept. accept. Councillor Hutchinson. Yes, yeah, absolutely. Agreed. Council, Council Ward. Agreed. Councillor Hastings. Agreed. Councillor Brading. Yeah, agreed. Councillor Hobart. I agree, agreed. Yep. Councillor Peace. Yep, yeah, absolutely. Agreed. Councillor Whittle. Agreed. Councillor Abraham. Agreed. And myself, I agree. So that recommendation. Chairman, Chairman, um, if I may, uh, the Chairman scrutiny has asked if he could make a comment before you conclude the vote. Just seeing that in the chat bar. Didn't we hear him the other night? Uh, um, yeah, well, no, we're into the votes on this now, um, so I'll exercise my right on this. Item B, um, the Cabinet be recommended that as part of the update letter to all residents, an invitation be included to participants in an online survey to identify the priorities for recovery. Um, and my recommendation to Cabinet is that we accept that because we would consider that anyway. Um, just going through, Councillor Mosdor. Agreed, I think it's agreed. Councillor Hutchinson? Yes, absolutely agreed. Councillor Ward? Agreed. Councillor Hastings? Agreed. Councillor Brading? Agreed. Councillor Hobart? Yes, I agree. Councillor Peace? Agreed. Councillor Whittle? Agreed. Councillor Abraham? Agreed. And myself, I agree. So item the third recommendation um, is that a list of questions the committee that are answered in detail by the officers be maintained and each question is signed off by the chair of the scrutiny committee and the cabinet. Members you're probably aware that over 70 questions is my understanding were submitted on this particular matter um, and I make one observation I don't think it's for cabinet to sign off their own answers. I think that is a matter for scrutiny to decide whether that's satisfactory. Therefore, on that basis, I would propose that we do not accept that. And so we reject. Um, just going to go through again. Councillor Model, Mosdor. Reject. Yeah. Councillor Hutchinson. Yeah, I reject that. We can't accept that. Councillor Ward. Yeah, I, I don't agree. No. Councillor Hastings. Yeah, I don't agree either. I just, I'm trying to unmute. So that's all right. That's fine. I'll try not to call you a model as well. I didn't mean yeah, that. Yeah, please. please uh, uh, right. Councillor Brady. It worked in the end. Uh, yeah, yeah. That, uh, reject from me. Thank you. Councillor Hobart. Yeah, I reject. Councillor Peace. Absolutely not. Reject. Councillor Whittle. Reject. Councillor Abraham. Reject. And I reject that one. Item uh, recommendation D is that a living document that lists all the lessons learned, including the negatives and positives in what happened and how they were resolved, be maintained. Um, as the paper indicates already, um, this is already happening. And on that basis, we're already recording them. I would say we can accept that recommendation. Um, if you agree, please say, Councillor Mosdor. Agreed. Councillor Hutchinson. Agreed. Councillor Ward. Agreed. Councillor Hastings. Yeah, agreed. Councillor Brading. Agreed, because we're already doing it, so yes. Councillor Hobart. 
Agreed. Yeah. Councillor Peace. Um, can I assume that there's no change on what we currently do because we already have a document that we work from. So exactly. providing we're not changing yep. anything, I agree. Yeah, that's the basis on which we're agreeing it anyway. Uh, Councillor Whittle. Agree. Councillor Abraham. Uh, yeah, agree. And myself. So that's accepted. Um, then the final recommendation, um, it says that the cabinet be requested to report to the next meeting of the committee, that is the scrutiny committee, on the council strategy and plans to deal with a second wave, including the health and economic aspects. Um, Chief Executive, just confirm, would you, that the next scrutiny meeting is in July or August? Um, thank you, Chairman. Uh, the next screening committee will be in July and there will be an extra one in August that we've added in because we've missed a round of committees um, because of the response to COVID. Um, right. I think you've you. got a request from the um, Chairman of Screening to make comment. On this particular, uh, on this particular recommendation? I believe so, yeah. Um, Councillor Garrett, are you there? I am, in, I am indeed, Councillor so Stewart. Can I be very specific? We're dealing with recommendation E, and I'm happy for you to comment because I know that the Cabinet have a particular view on this, but it's fair that we should hear you as Chair give your comment. I would stop you if you go beyond that brief, though, because we want to deal with this, um, the recommendations. So, Councillor Garrett. Thank you, Leader. I, I was also hoping to exercise my right under the Constitution to generally comment before you, you took votes. But on this particular item, you, you, will have, uh, you were, of course, present virtually. Uh, you will have seen that it was a, a, a split uh, vote. Um, but there is a, a, a strong feeling um, amongst a number of the, the scrutiny committee members that, that we, we need to be sure that a second wave is, is is being planned for that. That was that is undoubtedly going to be the case. But because of the nature of the split and that, that some feel that a second wave is, is being over overemphasized, I think it's extremely important that uh, the director of public health is able to present um, proposals um, to us um, so that we can reassure through the scrutiny function, which is working in tandem with you on this, to to reassure the public that. Um, that we're taking a very precautionary approach as a council to the, the potential for a second wave, bearing in mind a second wave may in fact be a second outbreak um, more in sort of like six to eight months time rather than a potentially anticipated one in, in, this, in this autumn. Thank you. Yeah, no, thank you, Andrew. Thank you for explaining that. Um, what Andrew did refer to there, which is linked to this, is that there needs to be um, an outbreak management plan our chief executive and uh, our cabinet members who have been allocated to that task are already dealing with that. Um, the issue on this report is, um, and I'm very happy for the director of, um, of health at the appropriate time to uh, deal with uh, a second outbreak, should there be one, and to report to cabinet, should that be required. But as we have learned, and I'm sure the public have seen, the Council's response to the initial outbreak has completely uh, consumed a vast majority of Council and officer time. Officers have changed duties, officers have been dealing with national situations and local. And as the Chief Executive rightly reminded us during this meeting, um, we're not out of the initial outbreak yet. So to um, prioritise a report on a second wave, which hasn't yet occurred, at the time when we are still dealing with the initial outbreak, in my view, is not appropriate at this time. I do think it's appropriate and we would make sure that a report is presented when ready in due course. But on this basis, uh, Cabinet, my uh, recommendation to you is that we reject this particular recommendation because its time is not right. And so therefore I go around again now and see, I uh, just need to say accept or reject. So I'm saying reject. Councillor Mosdell? Reject. Councillor Hutchinson? I, I would reject, Leader, and if I may just add that, of course, we, our response team is looking in great detail at how we cover any additional 
um, outbreak. This may be a small outbreak, it may be a large outbreak, and we are still awaiting government guidance as to the um, amount of authority we will have uh, in, in consequence of any shutdowns or any changes that we might have to make. So it's inappropriate for us to guarantee a report to scrutiny at this time, so I would reject that. Thank you for that, Councillor Brading. Yes, it's an inappropriate recommendation, which I strongly reject. Thank you, Councillor Ward. Reject. Councillor Hastings. Uh, agreed completely with uh, Councillor Hutchinson, therefore reject. Thank you, Councillor Hobart. I think you said reject, you're still on mute. Yes, you've nodded, yes. Councillor Peace. Reject. Councillor Whittle. Reject, your offices are far too busy administrating government policy at the moment. Thank you, Councillor Abraham. Yeah, I agree, everything is what you expect and I reject. OK, so that I'm the same position, so that one is rejected. Thank you for that. I turn now to the, uh, we'll do an assignment if you can just bear with me for the recommendations. So I read you four recommendations. Um, I think collectively um, we would be able to support. So I will accept all four recommendations and I'll go around and see if other members accept them as well. Councillor Mosdor? Accept. Councillor Hutchinson? Accept. Councillor Ward? Agree. Councillor Hastings? Accept. Councillor Brading? Accept. Councillor Hobart? Accept. <laughs> yeah, so then. Uh, Councillor Peace? Accept. Councillor Whittle? Accept. Councillor Abraham? Yeah, accept. And Councillor Stewart? Accept. Uh, so that matter is dealt with. Um, just bear with me a few seconds while I change my... Right, um, members, I'm now going to just add into the agenda um, the opportunity for um, yourselves to give a very brief update on your portfolio areas, which wasn't included. Um, I've got three points I want to mention. First and foremost, um, I've updated you from scrutiny, which was important. Um, secondly, that I can confirm we have now uh, moved forward with our engagement on the Venture Keys uh, purchase project. I have spoken with the both the owner of or the uh, leaser of the premises, and also um, we are now working with government and our own arrangements and a formal paper will come forward at the next cabinet meeting recommending that we purchase and go ahead with the venture keys just for the record because as you will recall this is 150 jobs this is marine manufacturing this is one of our um, spearhead opportunities and i think as a cabinet what we're trying to do is show our commitment to the community at a time when business has uh, suffered greatly on the island and i know councillor whittle will touch on that the other is just a reminder that we have an event called leblanc spelled b-l-a-n-q being currently um, put together um, which will involve some very significant people who want to come to the island uh, and uh, celebrate uh, an experience of cycling on the island and uh, more details on that will follow shortly and I think this will give some real added value to our island community again at a time when many, many businesses are suffering difficulty and we want to now ignite our island economy and the fact that we've got people of this stature um, and the names include Bradley Wiggins and other famous uh, cyclists who want to come here, experience the island's offerings uh, and talk about narrative of how great they think the island is in terms of cycling and related and those that eat nice food will probably be impressed by some of the absolutely international names who are connected with it so that's the leblanc and we'll give you more information on that in due course but i just want to get that on the record thank you i'm now going to move around the cabinet chairman if i may sorry it's the chief executive um, hello chief executive hello if i could ask before each cabinet member speaks if they could just pause a second so we can uh, turn the live feed on to the cabinet member because it just takes a second or two to adjust Thank you. Ah, thank you, Jimmy. That's why you told me to slow down earlier. That's um, right, so let's go to, uh, I've dealt with Councillor Modzell's comments. I'm sure she's happy with that, so I'll pass over to... Uh, I do have one more small thing at the end. 
Okay, I'll come back to you at the end. Councillor Hutchinson, anything you want to add to the activities today? I, I, I don't want to add to the report on uh, finance, uh, Leader, because uh, it is extremely comprehensive and it does set out our position. Uh, I, I would simply uh, like to offer my personal thanks to all of our finance staff that have been working flat out to get uh, this huge amount of money uh, that we have had uh, out to the businesses that have desperately needed it and also to ensure that those businesses that uh, have benefited from the various rate reliefs in particular the leisure, hospitality and tourism industries, which have had 100% relief for the whole of the year. Um, and it's been a really good effort from the whole of our staff to get that out. And I think we are now at the point where we've virtually expended all of the money that has been offered to us. Thank you and thank you for your work on that. I know you've put a lot of hours into that. Um, Councillor Ward. Uh, thank you, Leader. I've, I've got a few points. Um, the COVID-19 safety, uh, street safety measures have been put into Newport High Street um, and into Cowes as well. We will move on to Ride next. The I've had a few comments and officers have had a few comments, um, some most of support actually, um, and a few people questioning why we need to do this. Um, and quite clearly, we're following the government guidance. So that's why we're doing it as simple as that and to keep people safe as you said um the newport traffic plan st mary's roundabout that's uh, that's going well it's it's still on target um despite a few problems with the utility companies they had sprung leaks and things like that that they weren't expecting and so on and so forth but um all in all the target is it is on target so that's fine um, the floating bridge yet again this month or last month it would produce a 100% availability um, and just to let people know anybody can use it now it's not just restricted to essential workers. That's thank it. you very much for that uh, um, that's really good thank you. Uh, Councillor Hastings. Thank you leader um, yeah the household waste and recycling centres are now both open and I have to say in amongst, uh, I have to say a big thank you to the, the waste team and Amy. Uh, not, all, not all heroes wear capes. They just keep turning up when they're supposed to and they collect your green garden waste if you're booked in for that. And on that matter, we've actually, we're only 130 short of our capacity now, I learned this morning. So uh, that wow. very popular service, yeah. And considering we've increased from what we had before and we put a new truck on, etc. Uh, and in amongst all the COVID um, stuff, I think that's pretty good. And they and our team just do what they're supposed to do and more above and beyond the call of duty. So very happy with what's going on there. And the appointment system seems to be working exceedingly well at both tips, um, unlike in some parts of the country where it's become chaos. So. We're doing pretty well, I think. Thank you very much. Thank you. That's yeah. great. Um, Paul Brading, schools. Yeah, thank you, leader. Um, I just want to start off, if I may, well, I, with, with a few thank yous. I want to start by thanking um, my director of children's services and all of our senior uh, leaders for the incredible way they've just adapted to the ways of new working and really led uh, education and children's services through this incredible times. Uh, I want to thank all school staff um, for the way they um, worked during lockdown and for the way they've gone through the reopening of schools and they've really just got on with it for the benefit of the children and we could be grateful for their dedication to their jobs and all the social care staff the best thing I can my biggest compliment to the care staff is we're at level one we had a three-stage plan uh, level one was business as usual and through the way they've adapted to the way they work um, we're still at level one of our plan and that's the biggest compliment I can say. But there's lots of other things going on business as usual. Um, to give a few numbers actually, during lockdown, we had about 550 pupils in school of the vulnerable and key worker children, which is about three and a half percent of our school population, which puts us in the, put us in the top few schools and authorities in the country. And since we reopened schools on the 1st of June, the decision I took to follow government guidelines, 
but there's something like 2,100 children in school at the moment, and that's rising um, on a daily basis, really. All our primary schools are now open, and about 13.5% of our pupils in school puts us in the top few authorities in the country, which is a real credit to the way our schools are adapted to the requirements of reopening. Um, I've got to mention Christ the Kings. I know the press story was out last week. Uh, if you recall, when we took over the the, uh, uh, the council, uh, Christ the Kings was facing a real situation where they couldn't afford their financial lease payments, uh, and the council previously had advanced them those payments. We said we weren't going to do that anymore. Uh, we were taken to court because um, it basically the council was potentially liable for a, something worst case scenario of ten million pound liability. Um, we have been found completely innocent by the court and so we have won our court case. So there is no financial liability to this council whatsoever. An issue we tackled full on. Uh, and now our, our work now is to make sure that Christ the Kings as a school continues to thrive and continues to offer the best education for the children. So we're working with the school now, making sure they continue to do that education. Um, our home to schools transport, we're going through a procurement process. It's really encouraging actually that uh, there's been quite a few people who have put in a bid for our procurement process. So that's on track to be decided by the end of June, as we promised. And finally, um, West White Schools, which is our biggest um, situation, it hasn't gone quiet. Our implementation groups are still meeting virtually. The planning for the West White placement adjustments still going on uh, and they're well on track to be completed on time. So there's lots of normal business going on. Let's say thanks to all of my team from the officers through to the you know, the people at the sharp end for the great work they're doing through this COVID crisis. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. Um, John Hobart. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Right. Yeah. Um, the no only news I have at the moment is that our consultation went through. Uh, our representations uh, on the coastal path have gone through in time before the 9th of June to Natural England. Um, there is there will be a slight delay on Chapter One, which is the Barton Norris area, which we won't get a report from Natural England until uh, the autumn time. Uh, um, the rest has all gone per through perfectly well, and I'd like to thank very much our rights away officers for doing all this, uh, and uh, and also for the meetings I've had and, and enabling me to use this virtual system uh, of communication and many hours and minutes is spent uh, uh, up at Sea Close with um, our IT, IT IT guys and their patients. They've shown me. Uh, I am a bit of a philistine when it comes to technology, and I do thank them very much for all their patience. <laughs> Uh, we've, other than that, I don't think I've got anything prepared. I've had a, fine, a request from uh, from um, uh, Sportsman Ride Apley Beach to, to to start up again uh, on their football games though, on the beach, but we'll see how social distancing works on that. I'm probably in discussion with Wayne Whittle, um, uh, Councillor Whittle over, over that matter. And I know Councillor Lilly from, from Ride is very keen to get it all going again, but again, social distancing. We'll see how it goes. Okay. I think I that's about it. Lee played football, but that's good to know. Well, he um, watches it. <laughs> okay. um, Councillor Peace. Uh, yeah, thank you, Leader. So uh, firstly, I'd like to say thank you to all of the uh, the officers um, within my cabinet portfolio of community safety and public protection. Um, they've been uh, sent left, right and centre in dealing with uh, with COVID-19. Um, and, and you know, really works across the board, which it, which uh, comes back to what you were saying earlier about all of our officers have been doing lots of different things, not just their their core roles. Um, and it is testament to them just how well things have gone. Um, I'd like to say a special thanks actually to IT. Um, IT are the backroom the backroom people. You know, they're they're the people that no one ever mentions until something goes wrong. What I can say is that when COVID nineteen hit, the IT team under Roger Brown got the ability for up to a thousand staff from the Isle of Wight Council to work from home and they did that literally overnight. That is just a, a phenomenal feat in any any person's book um, but it just goes to show you know the, the class of the people that we have working within our council um, and I'd really like to say thank you to them because they have done an absolutely fantastic job and things like this you know our ability to communicate uh, as we have done with Cabinet 
over all these these weeks uh, and having this proper first formal cabinet meeting in public now um, just goes to show you know just what a brilliant team they are and they should be congratulated um, if I can also actually just mention and pick up where you left off with the LeBlanc, the, uh, LeBlanc uh, tour cycle event um, not many people know about it so it's this is hot off the press what we have is a world-class cycling event uh, it's an experience. It's coming to the island in set in uh, at the end of uh, the end of the summer period in September. Um, we have Bradley Wiggins coming. We have Sean Yates coming. We have Raymond LeBonc. Uh, uh, we have uh, Ashley Palmer Watts um, there, and we have a whole bunch of other Olympians that are coming along for this event. It puts our island on the world stage. It is probably the first high profile event that will be hitting the UK as we come out of COVID-19 and as we come out of this lockdown. And what it does is it shows that Isla White is very firmly open for business. So, and I'm sure Wayne will, will attest to this as well and everybody else, the message from us should be that the Isla White is open, we are gonna be open and we are open for business and we are open for tourism and we need people coming here. Obviously, it's gotta take account of uh, social distancing rules and government regulations, but, make no marks about it this island is opening and it is ready for business thank you thank you uh for very articulate thank you gary um councillor whittle follow that yes thank you leader i'd just like to say that um i don't know if you know or not but we were the first council in the area to set up, to set up the discretionary scheme for grants and I'd like to thank my region officers for the hard work they've done handing out the grants to all on this island. And uh, officers have processed and paid out 130 successful grants for the discretionary uh, grants, handing out approximately £1 million, which is a third of the total fund to businesses that missed out on the uh, small business grants. We've also had an encouraging level of inquiries in our regeneration sites. Uh, showing that the island is a lot more as a very attractive place to be and I'm well, very pleased to see Branston and Pier Street toilets receive planning permission at the planning meeting the other day which is encouraging and uh, I'd also like to take this opportunity to thank all the key workers who have kept our island going during lockdown uh, all our permitted businesses open and everybody fed and looked after on the island and I'd also like to take this opportunity to recognise all our island businesses, entrepreneurs and families who have worked hard over the years, investing time and resource building up their fine Isle of Wight businesses who have had to remain closed during lockdown to comply with the government policy and to thank them for their patience and understanding and assure them that guidance for safe practice in each sector will be provided to protect customers and staff alike to ensure safe and practical opening as government dictates the sector by sector recovery dates. And I'm very pleased to say that our island will be opening for tourism this year and we will get a season and uh, we're going to do it safely and practically as an island. Thank you. Thank you, Wayne. Very comprehensive. Thank you. Um, Barry, anything you want to add on the uh, planning front? Uh, thank you, Lee. I'd just like to say that uh, Wayne actually looked like uh, a newsreader from the uh, from ITV. Um, he, it's uh, really nice to uh, to see. I never ever thought that I'd ever be uh, on the cabinet uh, having to do something like this. Just a couple of things on the, the planning front. One is uh, there's I've had several uh, members actually contact me about issues of um, planning where they need enforcement to be involved. Uh, the enforcement officers are now starting to go out onto site. Uh, they're, they're able to now do that. <coughs> and um, the the other point I, I wanted to make was on the uh, the UCOB uh, oil exploration. Uh, there was uh, been a bit of a, a slip up on the way that uh, it's going to be put out into to the press. It's the, the application is going to be re-advertised and uh, it will be for seven weeks rather than the usual five to, to make um, to, just to cover the time that uh, for, for the uh, for the mistake that was made. 
Thank you, Barry. Um, and as we're into thanks, and I think it's justified sometimes to stop and thank people in the way that we've done. Um, there's a great deal of work being done, not just by the council, but we represent the leadership of the council. Um, and uh, I, as leader of the leadership of the council, thank all the cabinet as well for what they've been doing. Behind the scenes, we have been meeting well, every other day almost, um, making sure that Ire Island is kept safe, challenging each other to make sure we're all doing what we need to um, and engaging with our officers. So it's that teamwork um, that I think carries this island through. And if we keep going, then we will get to a good place on recovery. So thank you for that. Um, members, that takes us through to the final item on the agenda. You missed oh, sorry, Claire, I, did I miss you? I don't know how I did that. Yeah, the quiet one in the corner. Um, <laughs> just a couple of things. Um, so um, I didn't think it was appropriate to add it to what was, you know, something I really wanted to get across to you guys at the beginning of this. Um, today we um, submitted our care home support plan. Um, and we've also submitted the initial draft of how we plan to support homeless people post pandemic. For me, I think I need to thank the leader and this cabinet team. Because what many of the general public don't know is we've been meeting three times a week. I think, you know, we have all learned different things about our jobs that we never thought we would have to learn. You know, I probably know more about face masks now than I ever thought I needed to know in a lifetime. And I think from the whole cabinet team, I'd like to thank John Metcalf, Wendy Pereira and all the directors that have worked above and beyond. You know, I know directors who have not had any time off. They've been working weekends. They've been working late at night. And um, some days I think John Metcalf has looked a little bit poorly because of the hours he's working. But actually, he has done a phenomenal job. So thank you from this cabinet team to everybody. Thank you. Agreed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We take a vote on that. We it's um, right. Um, I'm just going to go. The one item on the agenda then is members' questions. And um, we do have a written question um, submitted by Councillor Lilly. Now, I'm led to believe he may actually be in the, in the room, so to speak. I don't know if we can confirm that. If he is, he's very quiet. Um, I, I can't hear him. I will read his question and then I'll ask um, Councillor Hutchinson to send him a reply to this, which I know he's prepared. Um, the written question was that in the light of the recent government rise in the interest on local authority borrowing by 1% and the change in the economic outlook caused by COVID-19, is the Isle of Wight Council going to change its policy of investing 100 million in commercial property as its current corporate plan? Um, secondly, on that question, in addition, how much of the 100 million has been invested and is the Isle of Wight Council putting an embargo on using the remainder in the current climate? What is the current position of any of the investments made out um, of the 100 million pounds? So that's the question. Um, there's a comprehensive answer, as you can imagine, to go with that. It's not something you can simply ask and then give a brief answer to. So, Councillor Hutchinson, are you happy to send um, Mr Lilly a uh, comprehensive response on that? Yeah, in fact, uh, I believe a comprehensive written response has already uh, gone through. Um, if you wish me to, Leader, I can give you the gist of that response quite quickly um, because it is a matter of public interest. Yes, I think we should in light of that, your comment. That's a fair point. Um, uh, Councillor Lilly is quite right. We um, had a headroom of up to £100 million. Pounds. Uh, we have spent about 35 and we are getting a return net of all of our costs, of our interest, of the management fees, all of those sorts of things of about £700,000 a year. Uh, what I can confirm is that our income has not suffered as a result of the COVID-19 uh, emergency as we avoided retail and hospitality assets and we've concentrated on low risk commercial uh, distribution and transport properties. Um, Councillor Lilly asks if we are proposing to change our policy. Well, no, because it's quite successful. But in fact, government um, have been worried about the huge amounts of money that some councils have been borrowing many times their annual turnover. Uh, 
we have been nowhere near that, neither would we want to be, uh, but they have suggested that there's probably not going to be uh, any further sanction uh, for this sort of uh, borrowing. But I will say that the return we've had so far has been a welcome addition to our revenue budget, and we would otherwise have had to trim another 700,000 a year from services. Um, had we been able to continue investment, we would have expected it to add possibly another 1.5 million net to our revenue income. I think the final point to mention is that we have used the money to buy capital assets, which have a value in themselves, and that value over time will increase as most capital assets do, and that will that net increase uh, will help to support our capital funding in future years. Uh, so that's the gist of the response that's gone to uh, to Councillor Lilly. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Stuart. That's a, as usual, very comprehensive and clear. And I'm sure if he's listening, Councillor Lilly will have picked that up. Um, members, I think I've reached the end of the agenda. Um, so unless there's any other business that anybody's uh, aware of that I'm not, um, then I'm going to call the meeting to a close and uh, catch up with you at our next internal meeting. Thank you, everybody. And thank you to members of the public. Thanks. Thank you, Leader.